Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing a video that I've been wanting to do forever. I don't know how many requests I've got for this video, but I've been putting it off. But in a video I posted last week, I mentioned that I might do it. And so many of you were interested, I thought I would finally sit down and do it. This is actually the second time I'm trying to film this. I just filmed almost a half an hour of footage. I went to edit it and it turned completely black and silent like halfway through. So I don't have any idea what happened. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. If it does, you guys aren't getting this video. But I'm going to try to refilm it. But today we are going over hamsters versus gerbils. I did a video a few months back doing leopard geckos versus crested geckos. And this video is going to be structured very similar to that one. I'm not going to be telling you in this video this is the better pet or this is the better animal. Because personally I believe that pet choice is very subjective. And it depends on what you want in a pet. A hamster might be an awesome pet for one person but make an awful choice for another person. So today I'm just mainly going to focus on some differences and similarities between the two so you guys can kind of make a more educated decision. This isn't going to be any type of a care guide or anything. This is just kind of a jumping off point. So if you are interested in getting either one of these animals this is a good place to start to see which one might be better for you and then you can go do your further research from there. Most of you probably know that I have had hamsters and gerbils. I do have a lot more experience with hamsters. I currently actually don't own any hamsters but this is the first time in over seven years that I haven't had any. I do plan on getting them again sometime in the future. I currently own a pair of gerbils but this is my first time owning gerbils. I've had them for almost two years now so I do have a little bit of experience but overall I do have a lot more hands-on experience with hamsters so I am more comfortable talking about their care than I am with gerbils but we're gonna go over some basics of both today. Overall I think both hamsters and gerbils make awesome small pets. They are generally pretty easy although they're not going to be as easy or as cheap as pet stores are going to try to convince you. They are still living animals that need a lot of attention and a lot of space but overall they're pretty easy pets and I do think they both make great pets. It just depends on what you're looking for. Like I said I'm not going to be saying which one is better than the other but at the end of this video I am going to talk about which I think might make the best pet if you're looking for your very first animal and you're not sure along with giving my opinion on if I like hamsters or gerbils more. This is a question I get asked all the time so I will be answering that at the end. I do have some notes over here to my left. I usually don't make any notes or an outline for a video, but since there are some really important topics I wanted to make sure I didn't skip in this video, I do have notes. So if you see me looking down, that is what I'm looking at. But this video is going to be split up into five different sections. First, we're going to start with the availability of the animals. We're then going to move on to some of their housing requirements, their diet. Then we'll talk about a little bit of their activity levels and handling. And then the last and final point, section number five, is going to be my personal opinions. So let's go ahead and start with number one. This is going to be the availability. Overall, I find that hamsters are generally much easier to find than gerbils. I have found this to be true no matter if you want to go to a pet store, if you're trying to look in a shelter. A lot of shelters don't work with small animals, but some do. Or if you're trying to rehome one off of like Craig list or Facebook. Where you go depends on your personal belief systems and what you think is best but I've had a lot more luck finding hamsters a lot of places. At least in my area gerbils are a little bit more hard to find. Of course if you do have breeders in your area that is always a great option. I'm not going to be talking about breeders because I really haven't found any around me. So generally either free homing or pet stores are the way I have to go around here but most pet stores will have hamsters. They'll have different types of hamsters. I've only found gerbils in a few stores around here and really I haven't found any gerbils that are needing new homes so it is pretty hard around here to find rehomed gerbils. I personally did buy my gerbils at PetSmart which I know a lot of people don't agree with. It's never my first option but I'm not going to deny the fact that I did. I did get them at PetSmart because I was having a very hard time finding them. Every once in a while I will see them at a local pet store but gerbils really aren't an animal I see a ton of. On the other hand I can walk into any pet store and find a variety of hamsters along with them being much easier to find in a rehoming situation. So overall hamsters are going to be more available. Along with that there are also a lot of different types of hamsters to choose from. When you're getting a gerbil at least in the US I believe the only type of domesticated gerbil is the Mongolian gerbil so any gerbil you see that's what it's going to be. Hamsters on the other hand you can get Syrian hamsters, dwarf hamsters, robo hamsters, Chinese hamsters. They all look different, they're all different sizes, have different personality traits so there are a lot more options as far as what you want. You can get both hamsters and gerbils in different color and patterns but if you want a different size of animal or a different activity level you're going to have a lot more options with hamsters. Along with that I do know that gerbils are actually illegal in some places. Off the top of my head I know that you can't own gerbils if you live in California so that's definitely something to think 
think about if you don't know which one you want to get. Other than that, the only thing about availability is their cost. Overall, hamsters and gerbils cost about the same. They are relatively cheap animals. When I say they're relatively cheap, I mean the animal themselves, not their setup. You're going to be spending a decent amount of money on either of these animals. But in general, if you're going the pet store option, you're probably going to spend about $10 to $15 on an animal. Of course, if you're going to rehome one, you might be able to get one for free and it's always going to depend. But initial cost just of the animal itself is going to be relatively similar. The next section I want to focus on is housing. Housing is a very important thing to think about before you get a pet. What do you have money for? What do you have space for? I am going to be talking about the US requirements. So if you are watching this like from Europe, these probably are going to seem pretty small because unfortunately the US is very behind in pet care, especially small pet care. So even though these minimums aren't the best and I always recommend getting bigger if you can, they are better than the little critter trails that a lot of hamsters unfortunately are still living in. So when you're housing either one of these, you're gonna to wanna to go big. For a hamster, you're gonna to wanna to get at least a 450 square inches of floor space cage. A lot of people either go with some type of an aquarium or a DIY bin cage. You're not gonna be able to go into the store and just buy a little critter trail and shove your hamster in there and expect it to be happy. One of the most common cages people pick for hamsters is a 40 gallon aquarium. These are roughly 650 square inches of floor space. You can get them on sale for around $50 and they are a very nice size to start. Gerbils on the other hand, it's very hard to find specific information for them. A lot of people say 10 gallons per gerbil is a good thing to go with. So if you're going by that, gerbils do need to be in pairs, which I'll mention in a bit. So you're probably going to be looking at at least a 20 gallon aquarium. So for either one of these, you are going to need space because they both require a lot of space. My gerbils, I actually have in a 40 gallon aquarium. So my gerbils and hamsters always live in similar size cages. They seem to really thrive in that and I can give them everything they need. But overall, both animals, you're going to need a large enclosure. Going along with the 10 gallon per gerbil thing, a huge difference that you need to think about when deciding if you want a hamster or a gerbil is generally hamsters are solitary animals and do best by themselves when gerbils are very social and need to be in pairs. Some people do keep their dwarf hamsters or their robo hamsters in pairs. I'm not going to get into too much detail on that, but I will just say I always recommend if you're going to get a hamster, just get one no matter what type of hamster it is because any type of hamster doesn't need another hamster with it to thrive. So you're going to lower any risk by just getting one. If you are interested in a Syrian hamster, you must only have one. It doesn't matter if they are litter mates, they're sisters and they've been best friends since birth. You never want to keep more than one Syrian hamster in a cage because they are solitary and it's not going to end well. Gerbils on the other hand are a very social animal so you need to get a pair at least. A lot of people like to go with groups if they're going with males but I just have a pair of females. And a big thing to think about even though you do need two gerbils there is also the possibility of them declanning which is basically where they start fighting. If you don't catch this soon enough they can draw blood. They can actually fight to the death. Usually before they completely declan, there will be a little bit of bullying and you'll see some warning signs so you can separate them. But it is always a possibility that they're going to fight and you're not going to notice right away. So you need to think about that. A few months back, my gerbils actually did declan. Luckily, I caught it quick enough and got them separated so they didn't hurt each other. It did take months, but I was finally able to get them back together. It did take a lot of time and hard work. So if you're not willing to deal with the social aspect of the animals, gerbils definitely would not be a good option. And I would definitely recommend a hamster. Along with gerbils needing to be in pairs, gerbils also need a lot more bedding. I personally give my gerbils around a foot of bedding. Some people recommend giving their hamsters that much, but I usually give my hamsters around six inches just because my hamsters never seem to burrow as much as my gerbils. My gerbils are almost always burrowed. They make very intricate tunnel systems and nests and they need all of that bedding. So you are going to spend a lot of money on bedding if you're getting gerbils. Along with spending more money on bedding, you'll probably spend more money on chews with gerbils because they do chew a lot. The main thing to think about here is I don't recommend putting plastic in a gerbil tank, but most hamsters, once again, I say most because every animal is different, most hamsters are fine with plastic. In general, gerbils are way bigger chewers than hamsters. I have plastic wheels with my gerbils, but that is the only plastic I would ever try with them. Luckily, they haven't chewed those up, but I would never risk giving them like a plastic house or anything because I know they would chew that up instantly and you don't want your gerbil accidentally digesting some plastic. So more natural items are usually better for gerbils, such as woods, grasses, or cardboard. On the flip side, a lot of hamsters aren't big 
skin chewers. Like I said, every once in a while you might get a crazy hamster that chews a lot so you don't want to use plastic for them. But in general, a lot of hamsters can have plastic houses and they won't ever touch them. So it is a little bit easier to switch up their enclosures and give them new items. The last thing with housing is wheels. No matter what type of hamster you get, you are going to need a big wheel that they have access to 24 seven that they can run on. Wheels with gerbils is a little bit more debated because some gerbils won't use wheels. I always recommend at least giving them one and letting them have that option, but they might not use it. I actually have two wheels for my gerbils so they can both have one at the same time if they want. My gerbils use their wheel every single day and love it, but it is definitely 100% a necessity for hamsters. Moving on from housing, the third thing is going to be diet. This is going to be a pretty short section because overall I have found their diets to be very similar. When you're researching hamsters, there are numerous great resources out there. The Hamster Hideout Forum has some awesome safe foods list. This covers everything from like seed mixes you should feed them to safe fruits and vegetables. Gerbils, on the other hand, I've had a lot more trouble finding what is the best for them. I haven't found the exact protein levels and everything that gerbils need. So personally, I have been basing my gerbil diet pretty loosely off of my hamster diet. I feed them basically the same thing. Their main seed mix is the Higgins Sunburst. I do supplement hamsters with the Missouri rat and mouse pellets a lot. I don't give them to my gerbils as often. I prefer the seed mix. But overall for both animals, if you have a high quality seed mix, their diets are pretty simple. You just don't wanna go out and buy any mix out there on the market because a lot are very low quality. They have low quality ingredients and a lot of artificial colors. But overall, I don't think diet is a huge consideration when you're deciding if a hamster or a gerbil is better because they are both pretty similar. Section number four is going to be about their activity levels and handling your animals. This is a section that is really going to vary depending on the person. Everyone has their own experiences with taming and handling. Every animal is going to be different, but overall I have found that gerbils are much more active animals than hamsters. I found that this activity level makes the gerbils extremely fun to watch if you're more into just watching an animal interact in their environment and with each other since gerbils are social. Gerbils are a really fun animal to watch. Hamsters on the other hand tend to be not quite as active. Even robo hamsters, which are usually the most active of the hamsters, aren't in my experience as active as gerbils. Hamsters are completely nocturnal, so they are going to be asleep most of the day. They might wake up to get a drink or something, but in general, they're going to be awake at night. My gerbils wake up throughout the day, throughout the night. I swear they never actually sleep. I think they're actually awake right now. So I do see my gerbils a lot more during the day. They're interacting with each other. They're digging tunnels. So overall, the gerbils are just much more active. Along with their activity level goes the taming. This is an area that I don't talk about too much because some of you might know I am more hands off with taming. A lot of people don't agree with that, but with my small animals, like I mentioned with my gerbils, I love to watch them interact with each other and interact with their surroundings. And I'm not a person that's going to get my hamster out every day just to play with it. I do of course get my animals out occasionally but I'm not a person that gets them out all the time so it does depend on the person and it depends on the animal. But overall I have definitely had more success taming hamsters than I have with gerbils. I think the activity level comes into this a lot. Syrian hamsters in my opinion have been the easiest for me to tame because they usually are a little bit more laid back. Something like a robo hamster or a gerbil that has a lot more energy is a lot more excited is probably going to take a little bit longer to tame. Like I've been repeating this is always going to depend on the personal animal. You might have one Syrian hamster that you bring home and you barely have to tame and it's just good to go. You might have another Syrian even from the same litter that you work with for months and months and it's not really warming up to you. So there are going to be a ton of variances so don't go out and buy a Syrian and just think it's going to be easy to tame but overall I have found that they're the easiest just as a general statement. I mentioned this a little bit in the housing, but along with the activity, gerbils do chew a lot, so you're probably gonna be spending more money on chew toys. You can use stuff around the house, like cardboard tubes, like toilet paper tubes, but I like to give my gerbils a lot more variety, so I do buy them a decent amount of toys. So if you go out and buy a $5 toy for a gerbil, it might last them one or two days. If you go out and buy a $5 toy for a hamster, they might not really touch it and it will look cute in their cage for a lot longer. So just be prepared. If you get a gerbil, you might be spending more money on toys. Once again, it does come down to the animal. Some people have crazy hamsters that chew a ton, but in general, hamsters are much calmer with chewing. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about, section number five is going to be my personal opinion. Overall, I think both hamsters and gerbils make wonderful pets. If I didn't think so, I wouldn't own both of them. And like I said at the beginning, I don't think one is inherently better than the other. It depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I think if you have never owned a hamster or a gerbil before and you're trying to decide which one might be the first for you and you're a little hesitant, 
I would have to recommend a Syrian hamster, more specifically a male Syrian hamster. I have found that male Syrian hamsters are the calmest of all the hamsters and gerbils I've owned. They're generally pretty laid back and pretty easy to tame, so this is why I think they make a great first option. Also, if you're just jumping into small animals, you might not want to deal with the social aspect of gerbils because that is a lot if they decide not to get along. So going with one single animal might be the best off the start. So if you're thinking about maybe your first pet, I would definitely recommend looking into a Syrian hamster. Of course, all other hamsters still make great pets. I have just had the best luck taming with Syrians. I also like recommending hamsters before gerbils for a new pet owner, just because I found it's so much easier to find a vast majority of information about hamsters. When I was researching my gerbils, a lot of people disagree about a lot of different care options so far. And if you don't have a ton of experience with small pets, it might be harder to kind of decide what is best for you. But when you're researching hamsters, there are so many great resources out there. There are so many great hamster YouTubers along with a hamster hideout forum, which I definitely recommend. So if you have questions or anything, it's a lot easier to find them about hamsters so I think that's something really to consider if you're thinking about your first pet so there is a lot more available information about hamsters. Now I'm going to answer the very last question I think this is probably the question I have been asked most recently do I personally prefer owning hamsters or do I prefer gerbils? Like I said at the beginning I've owned hamsters for many years I think seven or eight years I don't have any right now but I do plan on getting them again sometime in the future. I've had my gerbils for about two years now but they are my first gerbils I've ever owned so I do have a lot more experience experience with hamsters, but to finally answer this question, for me personally, I actually prefer gerbils as pets. I know I'm probably going to get some heat for that because my channel did start as a hamster channel and like I said I do love hamsters and I plan on owning them still. I mentioned it earlier but I love watching my animals in their habitats and the main part I love about gerbils is that social dynamic between the two. I've always had solitary hamsters but watching two gerbils love each other and interact is so much fun and so the social dynamic even though it can be hard to deal with if they decide to fight it's definitely worth it and I just love that part about owning gerbils. So I do love both of them but I do think I like gerbils just a little bit more. So hopefully if you're thinking about getting an animal or if you're just wanting some more information this helped a little bit. Like I said this is in no way a care guide or even saying which is better. I just wanted to do a little concise video so if someone's wondering which one might be best for them hopefully this helped. If you are thinking about getting one or if you have an animal let me know down in the comments if you think hamsters or gerbils are better for you personally or what you think would be best for a first pet. I always like to hear your guys' opinions down there but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give it a big thumbs up make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and i will see you guys next time